Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to talk about setting up variant critical hits in Roll20, no API required. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So there you are, it's the climax of the campaign. Your barbarian is charging in, axe held high, they make a swing, and you roll a nat 20. And the table goes crazy, because this is one of those moments that you live for as a player. And then you grab up your damage dice, and you roll, and you get... Snake Eyes. And there is nothing more frustrating or disappointing as a player when you get double nat ones on critical hit damage. I mean, a crit is supposed to be one of those epic, legendary moments where you take the monster's head clean off or, you know, disarm the bad guy, do something cinematic and wonderful, and instead you roll two damage. And that's just... ugh. So, there's a variant rule that goes around that a lot of people use, which is when you score a critical hit, you take the maximum damage that the weapon can deal and add that to your damage die roll. So let's say you're using a rapier and a rapier deals 1d6 points of damage. Instead of rolling 1d6 and then rolling the d6 again to get your crit damage, you roll your 1d6 and then you add 6 to that roll. And that guarantees that you're always doing more damage than just a standard attack roll when you get a critical hit. So, this is actually pretty easy to set up for most weapons and classes in Roll20, so let me show you how to do it. So here I am in my game, and I've got my rogues character sheet up here. And so what I'm going to do is scroll down until I get to the attack section, and let's use my rogues short sword, for example, here. So what I'm going to do is click on the cog icon next to the short sword. And when you click on this, it shows you what the attack is doing. So we're dealing an attack roll, we're then adding our dexterity modifier, we're proficient with this attack, and then down here is our damage, which is 1d6. And if we look right here, we can see that there is a space for the crit, and the crit defaults to 1d6. And so that means when we score a critical hit, we're going to roll 1d6 for the regular damage and 1d6 for the critical damage. Well, I can just set that to be a fixed value of 6. And so now, when I score a critical hit, it will roll 1d6 and then add this value to the overall damage roll. Now, to test this out, we could just keep rolling over and over and over again in the hopes that we're going to land a crit. But there's actually a really easy way to force roll 20 to roll a critical hit. And the way to do that is to go into the crit range here and just change that down to 2. And what that means is all we have to do is roll a 2 or higher and we're going to score a crit. So let's close the cog here and we'll make our attack roll. And there we go. You see I rolled a 26 and a 16 is also being counted as a crit. And if I click on the short sword to roll my damage now, we can see here's my damage. There's my 4, which is my 1d6 plus my dex. And again, you see right there, I rolled a 1 on my damage, but I have a 6 being added to the total here, so that's 10 damage, and so even though I rolled poorly, I'm still doing double digit damage. And the great thing about this is you can take this exact same approach and put it in for a dagger, a rapier, a sickle, an axe, whatever it is that your character is using. But of course, there are times when you're rolling even more damage dice. You can see that I'm using a rogue right now, and my rogue rolled a rather unimpressive sneak attack right here. This variant rule says that when you're rolling, say, sneak attack damage, and you're rolling, as I am here, 4d6, you're going to get 6 automatically plus 3d6. So you're maximizing one damage die on the sneak. And it's actually pretty easy to set that up too. So let me show you how that works. So on the rogue's character sheet, we're going to scroll down here to the global damage modifier that's set up for sneak attack. This is going to get added to a rogue's character sheet automatically. And again, we're just going to click the cog. And as you can see, we've got the damage die here and then the fixed value for the crit damage. So 46 for your regular attack and then another 46 for your crit. So what we want to do is make it so that one of these critical sneak attack dice is maximized and then we roll the other ones as normal. And in order to do that, we're going to need to do some math. 
So just to review how the rogue sneak attack dice work, every odd level you're getting an additional d6 of damage. So at level 3 you have 2d6, at level 5 you have 3d6, at level 7 you have 4, and so on. So what we want to do is have our character sheet automatically figure out how many damage dice we're supposed to roll and then maximize one of them. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to fill this out in my trusty notepad window here just because it's a little easier to read. So the first thing we want to do is get a reference to our character's level because our damage dice for sneak attack is based on what level we are. So we're going to start out with this at squealy bracket base underscore level and that's going to retrieve what level we are from the character sheet. Now if we jump back to the rogues progression table for a second we're seeing that at every even level we're dealing a number of sneak attack dice equal to half our level. So at level 4 we're doing 2d6, at level 6 we're doing 3d6. So we're going to say base level divided by 2. So that's going to tell us half of our level. So if we're level 8, this will calculate 4. If we're level 2, this will calculate 1. Okay, that's great, but what happens if we're in odd level? If we're level 5, then this is going to calculate 2.5 rather than 3. And if we try to roll 2.5 dice, that's going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is tell roll 20 to round this value up. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to enclose this whole expression in parentheses and we're going to type in seal. And seal is a mathematical expression meaning ceiling, which says whatever value you get here, round up. So if we are level 5 and we perform this calculation, we get 2.5, we round up to 3. If we're level 7, we're going to do this calculation, we get 3.5 and we round up to 4. And that is consistent with the damage dice for sneak attack as we progress through our level. Now you may be looking at this and saying, well, fantastic Nick, but we've just reverse engineered how sneak attack works normally. How is this helping us with this variant critical? All right, here we go. So our level 7 rogue is supposed to be rolling 4d6, but we don't want to roll 4d6, we want to roll 3d6 and add 6 to it. So what we're going to do now is subtract 1 from the number that we get here. So we're going to calculate our base level, divide it by 2, round it up, so in our rogue's case that's level 7, that's going to return 4, and then we're going to take away 1 from that. And that's going to give us our 3, so we're rolling 3d6. So now we need to tell roll 20 to make this a die roll. So we're going to enclose this expression inside of square brackets. And I just want to mention one thing here, that spacing is important with this equation. If you try to run this and it doesn't work, check and make sure that you've got the spacing exactly right. There should be a space between the set of double square brackets and the word seal and a space between the minus one and the closing set of double brackets. And then we're going to say D6. And that's going to tell roll 20 to roll that number of D6s. And then to finish this off, we're just going to add 6 to it. So we're going to calculate our level, divide that by 2, round it up, subtract 1, roll that number of D6s, and add 6. Okay, so let's take this for a spin. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go back into my character sheet and I'm going to modify the global sneak attack modifier to my new equation. And so we'll close that up here. And now I'm going to have my bugbear roll another attack with his short sword. Okay, again, it's a crit on anything because of that tweak we made earlier. Let's go ahead and roll damage. And we can see here that we rolled six. Oh, actually, we rolled maximum on the roll and we added. And then here, you can see that we rolled 3d6 and added 6 to it, and then on the original one, we actually rolled 4d6. And this is an awesome damage roll here. I, I wish I could have gotten this in a real game. Um, but now you see that we're doing this epic level damage on a crit, and that just makes it a much more satisfying and exciting experience for your players. Now, there are other class features that roll extra damage dice when they land a critical hit. The one that jumps to mind is a Paladin's Divine Smite feature. And the community's got us covered. If we come out here, a user named Beast Control 17 has given us this macro, which does the same type of thing when you get a critical hit. It maximizes one of the damage dice. So big thank you to Beast Control 17. We can just copy this macro, throw it into our game. I'm just going to paste it in there. And you can see it gives us a prompt. So what spell level are we using? Let's say that we're using a first level spell slot. 
is this an undead or a fiend? We'll say, sure it is. And then, did we land a crit? Yes. And then we submit that, and it calculates the total amount of damage that we will be dealing to that undead. Oh, and one final thing before I forget, make sure that you set your critical range back to its normal value, put this back to 20, before you go back into your real game, otherwise your DM is going to think that you're trying to cheat. So there you have it, variant critical hits that do more damage and help your players feel like the epic heroes they really are. I hope you found this video helpful, if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time folks, have a great day.